access uh, to uh, legal redress. The Atlanta Federal Penitentiary is one of the oldest prisons in the United States. This is where the Immigration Service held many of the Marielitos they were trying to deport. In 1986, there were almost 2,000 of them here, not one of them serving a sentence for any crime. They were called detainees. That year, the Congressional Committee took an interest in the Cubans, investigated and published this report. They condemned what they called warehousing of detainees. They called it brutal and dehumanizing. Indefinite detention was a fundamental human rights dilemma for the United States. The Cubans had many complaints about Atlanta, but we discovered one that had not surfaced publicly before. The widespread misuse of drugs such as the powerful antipsychotic Thoracine. The institution got significantly more money for looking after psychiatric cases than for ordinary inmates. This practice was blamed on an assistant warden named Dr. Martino. We located Dr. Bolivar Martino, who now works in a veterans hospital in Dublin, Georgia. He was chief psychiatrist in Atlanta. Who were the Marielitos? You had a highly volatile group, black, low education, young male, black male with little education, with little work ethics. The type of people we got were highly impulsive, what we call DVIs, disruptive, disturbed individuals, DVIs. It's not a psychiatric term, but it's a very good term when dealing with uh, uh, correctional people. You got the borderline, you got the paranoid, you got the atypical and the schizoid. And each one is a different type of personality. And then we had what well, we came up with normal. Out of 1,109, normal at that time was 48. The whole prison, as far as I was concerned, was a really a psychiatric social laboratory. It was just fabulous. The heart of the social laboratory was cell block C. It was here that Dr. Martino treated his cases. They were kept in line by a combination of drugs and physical abuse. Earl Lawson also knew Dr. Martino. He was a correction officer in Atlanta and was taken hostage by the Cubans during the Atlanta prison takeover. He is now retired. This is Dr. Martino. He... You knew him? Yes, he... I get emotional feeling in dealing with. Uh, in my opinion, Dr. Martineau was a snake in the grass. Uh, he was not particularly appreciated by none of the staff. He was not particularly appreciated by the detainees. Uh, he did not enjoy the respect of anybody. Uh, he had the power of chief medical officer, which is a very powerful position within the institution. And I believe Dr. Martineau would have worked well back under the Hitler regime. I think that he's, uh, he had no uh, feeling of sensitivity toward anybody. Ciro del Castillo, Cuban architect in Miami, worked in Fort Chaffee with the Marielitos, and it was there that he met Dr. Martino. ¿Y por qué no querían a Dr. Martino? Por, por el trato que les daba, o sea, no los consideraba, o sea, los inyectaba, los, les daba las pastillas, eh, los amarraba, o sea, eh, los amarraba a las, ca a las camas esas para, para poderlos eh, controlar y, desp y después de eso, porque pues recomendaba que no les dieran un patrocinador, que era, que era por dinero, que entonces ya no podían salir del campamento, porque refugiados que salían del campamento era un caso menos que ellos tenían para su poder seguir ganando dinero. Entonces, mientras más refugiados los pudieran mantener allí, mientras más refugiados producto de la atmósfera se, se pusieran más depresivos, más ellos iban a poder seguir viviendo de los refugiados, viviendo de los cubanos del Mariel, que es en definitiva lo que mucha gente ha hecho durante todos estos años, vivir de los refugiados del Mariel. Mi asunción es, si estaban haciendo en Atlanta lo mismo que hacían en Fort Chaffee, no pongo en duda cualquier cosa que haya pasado en Atlanta. Pero puedo decirles esto. I witnessed some horrific things in the Atlanta penitentiary. 
and we are America, and nobody in America deserves to be locked down on all fours and to urinate all over yourself for three days. Nobody. Denny McLean was a famous baseball player. He is now a radio personality in Ohio. He was in Atlanta with the Cubans and wrote a book on his experiences. You know, I've got great compassion for what they put those people through. As hard as we think it was for us, they didn't screw with the Americans the way they screwed with the Cubans. Their idea was hit them with Thorazine, first of all, tie them down, handcuff them down to the gurney, and hit them with Thorazine. That's what their whole program was. When you have a doctor who is prescribing it and, and injecting it like it's just lemonade, I mean, it's, it, something is wrong. And the guy, if he still got a, and if he still got a medical license, it'd be outrageous if this man, God forbid, God forbid he's practicing on anybody today. Dr. Martineau, would it surprise you to know that a lot of the people that pass through Atlanta blame you for an awful lot of their grievances? Me personally? Yes, you personally. Dr. Martineau's name comes up well, a Dr. lot. Well, Dr. Martineau, of course, was the chief medical officer. Weren't you the deputy warden? Uh, yes, as a social warden. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Doesn't it surprise you? No, 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 because again, number one, the vast majority of the people we had there were antisocial type personalities. We have a video with people you probably recognize who speak about serious human rights abuses. May we show it to yeah, you? Sure, sure. Se llama Martinón, Martinón, eh, puertorriqueño. Cualquiera llegaba al, al doctor ese con, un, con una enfermedad, entonces lo que hacía era que le decía, no, te vamos a dar eh, Toracín, pero algunos cubanos, como ya sabían lo que era el Toracín, decían, no, no, no lo quiero. Entonces le decía, ok, entonces no te lo vamos a dar. Entonces lo que él le hacía era, agarraba a la enfermera y le decía, pónselo en la comida. Y se lo mezclaban en la comida. Yo estuve en Atlanta y había personas, yo no, porque nunca tomaba nada para los nervios. Una y, y, y había personas que le decían que no podían dormir y él le decía estaba, él le mandaba una pastilla para los jefes, le daba una pastilla que se llamaba Jardó, otra un jarabe le decía Toracina, otra pastilla más, y después al otro día la persona esa amanecía caminando como si fuera un zombie, como si fuera un muerto viviente. Muy cerca vi los abusos que ese hombre cometió y de la manera que volvía loco de verdad los cubanos. ¿Cómo los abusos? Porque ahora por ejemplo usted no podía dormir y entonces usted iba a ver al médico. Entonces pues enseguida lo remitían para, para el psiquiatra, a ver por qué no dormía. Y le daba una pastillita por la mañana. Ya ese hombre a las dos horas caminaba como un autómata. Yo lo veía que ni conocía a nadie. Ey, fulano. Y así figura usted, llegaban lo que se Él experimentaba con los cubanos. Y va a pensar que ese doctor le es Drácula. So, Dr. Martino, Dracula, Thorazine, what do you say about this? What do you want me to say? When his horror stories for so many people. Uh, what do you say? Let me put it this way. Our institution was evaluated continuously by the BOP from above. You've got to have a scapegoat in a lot of these things for any reason, for any type of purpose. You see. You've got to have a scapegoat. And uh, so they, they get out on one person. Dr. Martin, you were also accused of trying out medicines on the Cuban detainees for experimental purposes. Trying out what? Thorazine is a normal type of treatment, not on uh, uh, experimental purpose. No medicine that was given there was ex for experimental purposes at all. What experiment? What purpose? Well, if you take a guy who's bad and then you treat him as though he's mad. You, no, you t no, no. You take a guy who is bad and you put him in segregation and you leave him there. November 1987, Atlanta erupted. The riot was led by the Cubans, and one of the first people they went looking for was Dr. Martineau. He escaped minutes ahead of his pursuers. The spark that ignited the biggest prison riot in U.S. history was the announcement that the deportations that had been suspended for two years would be resumed. Many of these Cubans had already been approved for release in the U.S. The Cubans took 89 hostages and held control of the prison for 12 days. It was then that some organizations publicly came to the support of the detainees and their families.
As a result of the takeover, individual hearings were held and about 60% of the excludables were released in the US, proving that they were considered fit to live in American society. It was in August 1991 when another prison crisis took place, this time in Talladega Federal Prison in Alabama. The Cuban detainees protested against abusive treatment and called for justice and fair immigration hearings. The takeover lasted for nine days. Talladega is a high security prison. It is the last stopover for the Cuban detainees before being deported.